Okay, welcome back everyone to the Athletes Mind podcast. If you are new, make sure you subscribe. We really appreciate the support. If you are returning, thank you for the recent support. It really does mean a lot. Make sure you check out the Instagram and the TikTok for updates on there. Um, again, I'm your host, Tony. Uh, I think we're on episode 31 now. So um, yeah, getting, we're getting there. So uh, today we have Indy Cotton on the uh, podcast, um, a Queensland basketballer, state player, and next up Australian guard. So um, Indy, how's it going? How's the training been going with basketball? It's great. Thanks for having me on the podcast. Really appreciate it. Yeah, all good, man. Um, so are there any big events that you're training towards at the moment or what's the go with the uh, focus? Well, well, next week we've got the under 18 nationals. So looking forward to playing that next week. So teams preparing and looking like we're going to have a good, good week over there. And you know, it's home, it's in Brisbane. So it should be good. Nice, bro. Um, when we get our athletes on, we like to ask how they actually got into their sport, a bit of backstory. So how did you actually get into basketball? Was it at a young age or was it later on? Oh, I didn't start playing basketball until I was probably 11. Yeah. Because I'm from SA originally. I played AFL footy like since I was like five or six years old. My dad played AFL. My whole family's AFL. So I played that for the majority of my junior career. And then I just picked up basketball. My mate was playing it in my footy team and went to his dad's team and just had a great time and just fell in love with the game and started playing it from then. Mm. So you, you mentioned you played footy. Um, how old were you when you stopped playing that? I think oh, it was tough. I was still playing basketball and footy and I was getting injured and I was like, oh, I'm really enjoying basketball. So I started picking that up. So I probably stopped when I was... 12 or 13 and then just solely focus on just playing basketball after that yeah when you first got into basketball what was sort of the realization that you were like you really wanted to take it somewhere was it the fact that you found it like fun you had passion for it or did you have like genuine talent and think you could have taken it somewhere oh when I first started I was really really raw coming from footy and then I just picked it up and just started really enjoying it and started progressively getting better, making Div 1 teams and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, this is really good. Started making first state team. And I was like, oh, I could probably maybe go somewhere with this sport. So I was like, oh, might as well give it a shot while I've got the opportunity to. Yeah, fair enough. And are there, were there any like junior memorable moments you had, whether that was grand finals, even when you played footy, um, anything that sort of stands out that you remember till now? Gee, um, well, especially recently playing for Australia, I think playing in that gold medal match versus New Zealand, that was like the main one. I was like, gee, this is like yeah. playing for your country, even at the junior level was crazy. And I was like super appreciative and grateful for every opportunity that I got given over there. I can imagine that would have been a surreal experience. Um, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but did you play with um, Roman Cialipa with that? No, nah, that was um the my age group. Roman's the um the year above me, so he oh, played the seven, the okay. fifteens. But no, uh, been training with Roman a lot, and he's he's very very good. Yeah, because we are uh, we recently had him on the podcast, and yeah, he seems like a pretty good player. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, something that I do want to ask you about um is social media. So on this podcast, we talk a lot about that and the influence it has on athletes. Um, big basketball accounts post a lot about you, you know, um, I'm sure as you've seen, your friends probably talk to you about it all the time. Um, how do you sort of deal with that social media attention? Because I've seen, for example, like baseline hoops, uh, they post yeah. quite a lot about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you see those things and you get really appreciative of like everyone doing those things. But like at the end of the day, you're just going out playing basketball. You're not playing for the social media accounts. You're just playing to, to win at the end of the day. So if you get those things, it's just a bonus. But really, you're just there to have a good time and just play to win whatever tournament or game you're playing. Mm. Would you say there's expectations from people around you, especially with like, you know, the hype of social media? Can, it, can this sometimes affect how you perform in your games or are you pretty good at blocking that out? Oh, I, when I first got it, um, probably when I was a bit younger now, I was like, really, I got overhyped about it. And then I just started to just fall into the trap of it a little bit. But since I've got older, I've just kind of blocked it out and not, not thought about it enough and just played my own game. And that's been good so far. Yeah, that's good. Because sometimes it can get to you. Like, I know the people that we have interviewed recently that um, are surrounded heavily in social media, it can sometimes like, it has a lot of positives, but also negatives. And going on yeah. to that, like, what is your overall opinion on social media in the sporting world? Do you think it's good for players to get their name out there? 
Well, I think it's it's been great so far, like all, seeing all these these new up and coming kids coming through, even the older generation getting posted. I just think it's great. Shows like how good Australian basketball is starting to get, like compared to the world now. And I just think that puts like Australia really good on the map and just shows that we're like a legitimate basketball nation. 100%, especially in the recent years, like Australian basketball has been getting like a lot of attention. I think with Lamelo Ball coming to the NBL um, mm-hmm. a few years ago, that yeah. sort of set the tone. But yeah, no, it's good that Australia's getting that recognition now. And like you said, through social media, it's good. Um, a bit of a random question I do have for you. Um, I came across a clip from, I think it was earlier last year, where you were actually interviewing some of your teammates and coaches. Um, oh, yeah. With your, with your involvement in social media, um, who sort of approached you to do that? Was that something you were interested in doing? No, oh, I just remember because I was uh, under 16, um, like pre departure camp, basically. And I just remember the um, Lockie Nuttall, who's like the head basketball Queensland social media, just came up and said, All right, Indy, just go around and ask, ask your, just your friends some questions about basketball. And I was like, I was put on the spot. And I was just going, I was just winging it half the time. Like, I had no clue what I was doing. I was just having fun with my mates. I have to give it to you, mate. You, you were pretty good. Like the interviewing skills, I rated. Thank so you. good on you. you. Um, now going on to some achievements that you've made. Um, you made the safe the, the South State team uh, this year alongside with some upcoming names. Um, you know, I think we, we obviously we talked about Roman Sealipa before, but um, yeah. how was the feeling making that team? Oh, it was it was really good. I was super grateful to make it. Just playing with all the older guys, LeBron, Rocco, Roman, all those guys have done it and been there before. They've won like back-to-back championships for them. So just learning as much as I can off, can off of them like will help me at my game so much. Was that a goal like for you coming into the year, making that state team? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. That was a goal that I set out in my mind. I was like, I want to make the under-18 Queensland state team. So I definitely put that as a goal that I wanted to do. Yeah, nice. And something that we like to mention as well is like role models and people that you've looked up to. Um, even in that state yeah. experience, were there any coaches that really helped you develop your game or even before state, like now, any coaches that have helped you? Yeah, yeah well, obviously, dad's a coach, so that always helped. He's always been there throughout the whole way, like all my supportive cast, like family, friends. But like head state coach, Sean Carroll, he's been like really good. When I came over from um, SA what, two years ago now, he's been a really good mentor, just helping me, coaching me really good. So I've been real appreciated to have him. You also mentioned that when you played in the state team, like, you know, so playing with some older guys, I'm sure you, you've experienced that as well. Um, was there anyone that you can name in particular that has sort of helped you in your journey that have experience in basketball, whether that's players that you've played with, against, or used to play yeah. any points and inspiration gee like you know teammates always come to mind then i've got a couple of good gold coast teammates like samuel gasser i don't know if you know he's been posted a couple of times on a couple of accounts he's always been there straight away with me whenever i need to talk to someone like i've always gone to him straight away he's always been good to be with the whole time i think from a mentoring kind of like place an older person I don't even know, like all those older guys, Roman, Rocco, they've just been so, so good to me, like getting me through it in like positive ways, not just like being like really aggressive. If I did something wrong, they'd always be like saying, I'm keep doing the right thing and everything. So like, they've been like really good. Yeah, that's really important to have. Cause like, you know, when you're playing at high levels, I think it's important to, cause confidence is a big thing as well. Like it, like you said, if you have teammates that are just, you know, going in on you for doing something wrong and that's not the best yeah. way to it is good to have older players to sort of pave that way yeah. for you and be there for you. So that's awesome. Um, and what about in maybe the NBA or professional leagues? Are there any players that you model your game after? Uh, well, recently I just love watching De'Aaron Fox play. He's, he's oh, yeah. crazy yeah. watching him. He's a lefty, but like very similar. Like he's quick. He gets to the rim really aggressively and he's starting to shoot a three. Like I just love watching him play. Like he's real good. Would you say he's like your, one of your favourite players at the moment or all time? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, I love watching him play. He's, he's definitely up there as like one of my favourite players. What what um NBA team do you support? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Chicago Bulls fan at the moment. They've been my team, like Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan. Like, I love all those guys. They're great. I respect that. That's nice. 
Um, now, we also like to get a bit of insight, especially in the Queensland basketballers. Um, we know that training, you know, it can be very intense and the routine can be quite busy. What does a usual week look like for you training wise? Um, how often a week do you actually train? Oh, probably I'd say you'd have like three normal just shooting workouts, no competitive, just getting reps up. That's what I do. And then we have two main training sessions a week for the state team. And they're, they're, they're the sessions we go real hard in. Like mm. we're getting through a lot of stuff to prepare leading up. So like we're all in the same same state of mind and we're in the same headspace. So like when we go on to nationals, like we're going there to win the gold medal. So like we're getting ready to go. And what about outside of team practice? Is there anything you do on your own, whether that's like gym work, going for runs, the, the extras sort of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely um, fitness is a massive, massive component. So going for runs is definitely something I do. Recovery, something that's really important nowadays with the amount of training and playing you're doing. I think that's something that I've been trying to get a lot better at as well, stretching, all that stuff. But just getting reps up outside, like shooting machine, just getting shots up, going down. Like all that kind of stuff has just like made myself so much better just getting reps up. With the shooting reps, is that like, is that solely by yourself or do you have coaches to sort of um, help you with that? Yeah, I'd have, um, sometimes I'd like to have coaches there because I like to just point out some things. Like I have my head um, basketball coach at TSS, that's the school I go to here, Anthony Petrie, who was a former um, Australian player. He, He's taken us for a couple of sessions. It's been great. Like his fundamentals have been insane for all of us to just help us get heaps better. So having a coach there always helps to just make sure you're doing the right thing and not just shooting for the sake of it. You're actually getting something out of every session. Yeah, that's very important because the coaches see stuff that you can't see. So that's good yeah. that you have someone to stick out what you're doing good, what you're doing bad. Yeah. Um, you mentioned, was it TSA, the school you go to? Oh, TSS, yeah, the Southport yeah. School. Yeah. Um, how yeah. is the school program over there with basketball? Yeah, it's it's phenomenal. It's it's really good. Like we train term two and term three, and we play term three, and it's it's really high level basketball. Like everyone's competing and everyone's going real hard, and we have really good players up here, so it's been really good. Is the I can imagine the rivalry would be quite big yeah. going against other schools as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, all those um, GPS schools, the competition we play in. Yeah, we 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 go out of every every game. It's must win game every game, so it's really good. Yeah, because over in WA we have um something called the PSA schooling system, which is um yeah. like yeah, I don't know yeah. if you know anything about it, but yeah, the rivalry with that um in every sport, yeah. footy, basketball, it's massive. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, with um routine wise, going into games, is there anything you like to do before games, like pre game beats or maybe meditation? Anything yeah. you should do to prepare yourself? Oh, I just remember, I think I've done this since I've been like probably, so if I first started playing footy, I'd always make sure I pray before games because I'm Christian. I'd always make sure I pray. Nice. Other than that, music, music's been one that I like to do to a certain point and then I just like to take it out and just just think. I think that's that's a good thing to have like 20 minutes before the game, take it out. Um, I'm not I'm not much of a superstitious guy with comes to putting on socks and shoes and boots or anything like that. I just like to go out there and play, but just making sure I'm getting in the right headspace to play is, I think, the main thing I like to do. Yeah, nice. And and how about after games, whether you win or lose, how would you react, um, you know, dealing with a loss, for example? Yeah, um, definitely, like, first, you got to accept that you've, you've lost and you got to just talk about it. I like talking to like parents or mentors about like the game, like what I could have done better, what the team could have done better. And then after that, I just um, just like to absorb it for maybe that night. And then the next day, you know, you switch your mindset and you're into the next game the next week. So you can't hold on to it for too long. Exactly. And going on to, you know, the coming years, are there any goals that you have set for yourself? Anything in specific that you want to achieve in basketball? Yeah, well, oh, definitely making more Australian teams is a big goal, making more state teams and all those selection stuff so that can get you to the to the next step, you know, centre of excellence, all of that kind of stuff. Like, that would be main goals. But at the moment, I'm just focusing on next week and just getting the job done there. Yeah, 100%. I think, yeah, it's very important to focus on the short-term goals because sometimes if yeah. you look too far ahead, then you can lose sight of, um, you know, what actually yeah. matters at the moment. Um, and, exactly. you know, as you're going through the ranks, you know, you're starting to go like very high level. Um, what piece of yeah. advice would you give to other aspiring basketballers, maybe the younger kids who want to sort of take yeah. that? Somewhere? 
Yeah, I think just to make sure you're a competitor at anything you do, just make sure that you're going out there and you're doing everything you can to win or doing everything you can to be your best version of yourself. And if you do that, the rest will look after itself. Good advice. Um, now, this question, we ask all of our basketballers that come on yeah. this. Um, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people, I'll just ask you the question first off, is who is the yeah, guy yeah. in the NBA, in your opinion? Um, obviously, the oh. Michael LeBron conversation, yeah. but yeah, who, who is the yeah, guy? Yeah. Oh, I'm hands down saying Michael Jordan's the best basketball player, Thank 100%. You. Finally. I, 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 know, I have some controversial statements that, People have said LeBron's better, but I can never get past the fact that Michael Jordan is the go at the end of the basketball. Thank you, because believe it or not, you're actually the first one to say Michael Jordan, and I'm a Michael Jordan really, yeah. fan myself. Yeah. But Roman C. Lee, yeah. said um, like yeah. obviously you can see why people would say LeBron, but you know Michael yeah. Jordan, he he made basketball what it is, so you just can't yeah. put that past him. You know what I mean? Um, just yeah. before we go, one last question we do like to ask our athletes is um. Yeah. If you could be any athlete in the world, who would it be and why? It doesn't have to be in basketball. It can be any sport. Yeah. Um, gee, you know, probably currently, I don't know, Steph Curry, someone that, you know, everyone would like to aspire to be, just the way he t- handles himself on and off the court and the way, like, he just aspires, like, everyone else and all that kind of stuff. So I think that Steph Curry would definitely be someone that I would like like to be and like, awesome. like to aspire to be. I rate that. Well, thank you, man. I really appreciate you coming on the podcast. Um, all the best for next week as well. And um, the future yeah, of the uh, we'll definitely be keeping an eye out, man. So, yeah, all the best. Um, thank everyone you. listening and watching, go and follow Indy on Instagram. Um, I'll link everything down below. Um, this will probably be the last basketball episode we do for now. We're going on to some footy episodes coming up. Make sure you subscribe. This will be out on Spotify. Go follow the TikTok. And yeah, I appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next episode of The Athlete's Mind. Thank you.